Hello, my friend. Welcome to your sleep story. My name is Stephen Dalton. I'm an Irish storyteller, and it's my great privilege to be the voice that you listen to as you go to sleep tonight. Tonight, I'll be departing from the usual sleep story, and in fact, tonight is a reading of poetry. But not just any poetry. I will be reading to you the first 25 sonnets by William Shakespeare. I was lucky enough to go to drama school in London, and I was taught about Shakespeare and how to speak his words by a great woman called Patsy Rodenberg. She literally wrote the book on how to speak Shakespeare, and it's called speaking Shakespeare. She taught me for three years, and I learned the rhythm of the speech and about the world in which it was written. And so tonight, I will share with you some of Shakespeare's words. Let yourself imagine that we are in a cozy place and it's raining outside. I hope you like this video. And if you'd like more, please let me know in the comments. If you want the video to end at a particular point, YouTube allows you to set a timer in the settings. It's called Remind Me When It's Bedtime. And don't forget to disable autoplay to avoid ads from upcoming videos. Okay, let's do the relaxation session now which will take a few minutes. I'm going to count down from 10 to 1. And as I do, allow yourself to let go more and more. 10. Feel the support of the bed or the floor beneath you. and feel the support of the earth beneath all of it. Feel what that does to you as you let go a bit more, knowing that you are supported knowing that you are safe. Nine. You are safe. Allow my voice to be an anchor of safety this evening. A voice that only brings you to safe and cozy places. Eight. The day is done. Whatever has been, has been. Whatever thoughts you may have about the day are not useful now. Recognize them. Don't fight them. But just watch them disappear, and whatever will be, will be. Sit in acceptance of that, and allow yourself to just be in this moment with my voice. Seven. You have a peace inside you. A peace that is always there. Peace lives within you. It's a constant friend. And it's just waiting to be found. 
See if you can find it now. Six. Feel into your body now. Just notice whatever is happening in your body tonight. Are there different sensations? Are you holding on to any tension anywhere? Maybe in your feet? Maybe in your hands. Maybe in your face. Just let go now. Five. Remember that you deserve rest. You deserve sleep. We all do. So allow that fact to enable you to let go a little more now. Four. Allow your imagination to start opening up now. Start to see the world of Shakespeare. London in the 15 and 1600s. A different world in many ways. Three. You have nowhere to be. Nothing to do. You don't have to be anybody now. You don't have to do anything. Two, perhaps allow yourself to feel a little gratitude now for this moment, for the ability to enter a restful, sleepy state. One, completely let go now as I read to you the sonnets of Shakespeare. Sonnet 1 From fairest creatures we desire increase, that thereby beauty's rose might never die, but as the riper should by time decease, his tender air might bear his memory. But thou contracted to thine own bright eyes, feedst thy light's flame with self-substantial fuel, making a famine where abundance lies. Thyself thy foe, to thy sweet self too cruel. Thou that art now the world's fresh ornament, and only herald to the gaudy spring, within thine own bud buriest thy content, and tender churl, Makest waste in niggarding. Pity the world, or else this glutton be, to eat the world's dew by the grave and thee. Sonnet 2 When forty winters shall besiege thy brow, and dig deep trenches in thy beauty's field. Thy youth's proud livery, so gazed on now, 
will be a tottered weed of small worth held. Then, being asked where all thy beauty lies, where all the treasure of thy lusty days, to say, within thine own deep sunken eyes, were an all-eating shame and thriftless praise. How much more praise deserved thy beauty's use, if thou couldst answer, this fair child of mine, shall sum my count and make my old excuse, proving his beauty by succession thine. This were to be new made when thou art old, and see thy blood warm when thou feelst it cold. Three. Look in thy glass, and tell the face thou viewest. Now is the time that face should form another, whose fresh repair, if now thou not renewest, thou dost beguile the world. Unbless some mother. For where is she so fair, Whose unerred womb Disdains the tillage of thy husbandry? Or who is he so fond Will be the tomb Of his self-love To stop posterity? Thou art thy mother's glass, and she in thee calls back the lovely April of her prime. So thou through windows of thine age shalt see, despite of wrinkles, this thy golden time. But if thou live, Remember it not to be, die single, and thine image dies with thee. For unthrifty loveliness, why dost thou spend upon thyself thy beauty's legacy? Nature's bequest gives nothing, but doth lend. And, being frank, she lends to those are free. Then, beauteous niggard, why dost thou abuse the bounteous largesse given thee to give? Profitless usurer. Why dost thou use so great a sum of sums, yet canst not live? For having traffic with thyself alone, thou of thyself, thy sweet self dost deceive. Then, how when nature calls thee to be gone, What acceptable audit canst thou leave? Thy unused beauty must be tombed with thee, Which, used, lives the executor to be. Five. Those hours that with gentle work did frame The lovely gaze where every eye doth dwell Will play the tyrants 
to the very same. And that, unfair, which fairly doth excel. For never resting time leads summer on to hideous winter and confounds him there. Sap checked with frost and lusty leaves quite gone. Beauty o'ersnowed and bareness everywhere. Then were not summer's distillation left, a liquid prisoner pent in walls of glass. Beauty's effect with beauty were bereft, nor it, nor no remembrance what it was, but flowers distilled. Though they with winter meet, lease but their show, their substance still lives sweet. Six. Then let not winter's ragged hand deface in thee thy summer. Ere thou be distilled, make sweet some vile, treasure thou some place with beauty's treasure, ere it be self killed. That use is not forbidden usury, which happy is those that pay the willing loan. That's for thyself to breed another thee, or ten times happier, be it ten for one. Ten times thyself were happier than thou art, if ten of thine ten times refigured thee. Then what could death do if thou shouldst depart, leaving thee living in posterity? Be not self-willed, for thou art much too fair to be death's conquest and make worms thine heir. Seven. Lo, in the Orient, when the gracious light lifts up his burning head, each under eye doth homage to his new appearing sight, serving with looks his sacred majesty, and having climbed the steep up heavenly hill, resembling strong youth in his middle age, yet mortal looks adore his beauty still, attending on his golden pilgrimage. But when, from highmost pitch, with weary car, like feeble age, he reeleth from the day. The eyes, for duteous, now converted are from his low tract and look another way. So thou, thyself, Outgoing in thy noon, unlooked on diest, unless thou get a son. Eight. 
music to hear. Why hearest thou music sadly? Sweets with sweets war not. Joy delights in joy. Why lovest thou that which thou receivest not gladly, or else receivest with pleasure thine annoy? If the true concord of well-tuned sounds by unions married do offend thine ear, they do but sweetly chide thee who confounds in singleness the parts that thou shouldst bear. Mark how one string Sweet husband to another Strikes each in each By mutual ordering Resembling sire and child And happy mother Who, all in one One pleasing note do sing whose speechless song being many, seeming one, sings this to thee, thou single wilt prove none. 9. Is it for fear to wet a widow's eye that thou consum'st thyself in single life. Ah, if thou issueless shalt hap to die, the world will wail thee like a makeless wife. The world will be thy widow and still weep that thou no form of thee hast left behind, when every private widow well may keep, by children's eyes, her husband's shape in mind. Look what an unthrift in the world doth spend, shifts but his place, for still the world enjoys it. But beauty's waste hath in the world an end, and kept unused, the user so destroys it. No love toward others in that bosom sits, that on himself such murderous shame commits. Ten. For shame deny that thou bearest love to any, who for thyself art so unprovident. Grant, if thou wilt, thou art beloved of many, but that thou none lovest is most evident. For thou art so possessed with murderous hate that gainst thyself thou stickest not to conspire. Seeking that beauteous roof to ruinate, which to repair should be thy chief desire. O, oh, change thy thought, that I may change my mind. Shall hate be fairer lodged than gentle love? Be as thy presence is, gracious and kind, or to thyself at least, kind-hearted prove. Make thee 
another self for love of me that beauty still may live in thine or thee. 11. As fast as thou shalt wane, so fast thou growest in one of thine from that which thou departest and that fresh blood which youngly thou bestowest, thou mayest call thine when thou from youth convertest. Herein lives wisdom, beauty, and increase. Without this folly, age, and cold decay, if all were minded so, the times should cease, and three score year would make the world away. Let those whom nature hath not made for store, harsh, featureless, and rude, barrenly perish. Look whom she best endowed, she gave the more, which, bounteous gift, thou shouldst in bounty cherish. She carved thee for her seal, and meant thereby, thou shouldst print more, not let that copy die. Twelve. When I do count the clock that tells the time, and see the brave day sunk in hideous night, when I behold the violet past prime, and sable curls all silvered o'er with white, when lofty trees I see barren of leaves, which erst from heat did canopy the herd, and summer's green, all girded up in sheaves, borne on the bier with white and bristly beard. Then of thy beauty do I question make, that thou among the wastes of time must go, since sweets and beauties do themselves forsake and die as fast as they see others grow. And nothing gainst time's scythe can make defense, save breed to brave him when he takes thee hence. 13. Oh, that you were yourself, but, love, you are no longer yours than you yourself here live. Against this coming end you should prepare, and your sweet semblance to some other give. So should that beauty, which you hold in lease, find no determination, then you were yourself again, after yourself's decease. When your sweet issue, your sweet form should bear, who lets so fair a house fall to decay, which husbandry in honor might uphold against the stormy gusts of winter's day and barren rage of death's eternal cold. Oh, none but unthrifts. 
Dear my love, you know, you had a father. Let your son say so. Fourteen. Not from the stars do I my judgment pluck, and yet methinks I have astronomy, but not to tell of good or evil luck, of plagues, of darts, or season's quality. Nor can I fortune to brief minutes tell, pointing to each his thunder, rain, and wind, or say with princes if it shall go well, by oft predict that I in heaven find. But from thine eyes my knowledge I derive, and Constant stars, in them I read such art, as truth and beauty shall together thrive. If from thyself to store thou wouldst convert, or else of thee I prognosticate, thy end is truth's and beauty's doom and date. 15. When I consider everything that grows, holds in perfection but a little moment, that this huge stage presenteth naught but shows whereon the stars in secret influence comment. When I perceive that men as plants increase, cheered and checked, even by the self-same sky, vaunt in their youthful sap, at height decrease, and where their brave state out of memory. Then the conceit of this inconstant stay sets you most rich in youth before my sight, where wasteful time debateth with decay to change your day of youth to sullied night and all in war with time for love of you, as he takes from you, I engraft you new. 16. But wherefore do not you a mightier way make war upon this bloody tyrant time, and fortify yourself in your decay, with means more blessed than my barren rhyme. Now stand you on the top of happy hours, and many maiden gardens yet unset, with virtuous wish would bear you living flowers, much liker than your painted counterfeit. So should the lines of life that life repair, which this, time's pencil, or my pupil pen, neither in inward worth nor outward fair, can make you live yourself in eyes of men. To give away yourself keeps yourself still, and you must live 
drawn by your own sweet skill. Seventeen. Who will believe my verse in time to come? If it were filled with your most high deserts, Though yet heaven knows it is but as a tomb Which hides your life and shows not half your parts. If I could write the beauty of your eyes And in fresh numbers number all your graces, the age to come would say this poet lies. Such heavenly touches, near touched earthly faces. So should my papers, yellowed with their age, be scorned like old men of less truth than tongue and your true rights be termed a poet's rage, and stretched meter of an antique song. But were some child of yours alive that time, you should live twice, in it and in my rhyme. Eighteen. Shall I compare thee to a summer's day? Thou art more lovely and more temperate. Rough winds do shake the darling buds of May, and summer's lease hath all too short a date. Sometime too hot the eye of heaven shines, and often is his gold complexion dimmed, And every fair from fair sometime declines, By chance, or nature's changing course untrimmed. But thy eternal summer shall not fade, nor lose possession of that fair thou owest, nor shall death brag thou wanderest in his shade, when in eternal lines to time thou growest. So long as men can breathe or eyes can see, so long lives this, and this gives life to thee. Nineteen. Devouring time, blunt thou the lion's paws, and make the earth devour her own sweet brood. Pluck the keen teeth from the fierce tiger's jaws and burn the long-lived phoenix in her blood. Make glad and sorry seasons as thou fleetest and do whate'er thou wilt, swift-footed time, to the wide world and all her fading sweets. But I forbid thee one most heinous crime. Oh, carve not with thy hours my love's fair brow, nor draw no lines there with thine antique pen. Him in thy course untainted do allow For beauty's pattern to succeeding men 
Yet, do thy worst, old time, despite thy wrong, my love shall in my verse ever live young. Twenty. A woman's face, with nature's own hand painted, Hast thou, the master mistress of my passion, A woman's gentle heart, but not acquainted, With shifting change, as is false women's fashion, an eye more bright than theirs, Less false in rolling, Gilding the object whereupon it gazeth, A man in hue, all hues in his controlling, Which steals men's eyes and women's souls amazeth, And for a woman Wert thou first created, Till nature, as she wrought thee, Fell a doting, And by addition me of thee defeated, By adding one thing to my purpose nothing. But since she pricked thee out for women's pleasure, Mine be thy love, and thy love's use, their treasure. Twenty-one So is it not with me, as with that muse, Stirred by a painted beauty to his verse, Who heaven itself for ornament doth use, And every fair with his fair doth rehearse, Making a couplement of proud compare With sun and moon, with earth and sea's rich gems, With April's first-born flowers and all things rare, that heaven's air in this huge rondure hems. Oh, let me, true in love, but truly right, and then believe me, my love is as fair as any mother's child, though not so bright. As those gold candles fixed in heaven's air. Let them say more, that like of hearsay well. I will not praise that purpose not to sell. 22. My glass shall not persuade me I am old. So long as youth and thou are of one date. But when in thee time's furrows I behold, Then look I death my days should expiate. For all that beauty that doth cover thee Is but the seemly raiment of my heart. Which in thy breast doth live As thine in me. How can I then be elder Than thou art? Oh, therefore, love, Be of thyself so wary As I, not for myself, But for thee will. Bearing thy heart, which I will keep so chary, As tender nurse her babe, 
from faring ill. Presume not on thy heart when mine is slain. Thou gavest me thine not to give back again. 23. As an unperfect actor on the stage, who with his fear is put beside his part, or some fierce thing replete with too much rage, whose strength's abundance weakens his own heart. So I, for fear of trust, forget to say the perfect ceremony of love's right, and in mine own love's strength seem to decay, o'ercharged with burthen of mine own love's might. Oh, let my looks be then the eloquence and dumb presagers of my speaking breast who plead for love and look for recompense. More than that tongue that more hath more expressed. Oh, learn to read what silent love hath writ, to hear with eyes belongs to love's fine wit. 24. Mine eye hath played the painter and hath steeled thy beauty's form in table of my heart. My body is the frame wherein tis held, and perspective that is best painter's art. For through the painter must you see his skill To find where your true image pictured lies Which in my bosom's shop is hanging still That hath his windows glazed with thine eyes Now See what good turns eyes for eyes have done. Mine eyes have drawn thy shape, and thine for me are windows to my breast, where through the sun delights to peep, to gaze therein on thee. Yet, Eyes this cunning want to grace their art. They draw, but what they see, know not the heart. 25. Let those who are in favor with their stars of public honor and proud titles boast, whilst I, whom fortune of such triumph bars, unlooked for joy in that I honor most, great princes' favorites their fair leaves spread, but as the marigold at the sun's eye, and in themselves their pride lies buried. For at a frown they in their glory die. The painful warrior famous for fight. After a thousand victories once foiled, is from the book of honor raise it quite and all the rest forgot 
for which he toiled. Then, happy I, that love and am beloved, where I may not remove, nor be removed.